Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new Cabral Concept. Excited to start this new week here on the show with a topic that I hope that you will find interesting, if not for you, for someone else that you may know in your life. This is absolutely dedicated to to the person who feels like they are maxed out with their potential, they're maxed out with where they're at in their life, and they don't necessarily believe they can do anything else because they are just the way they are. I don't know if you've ever heard it before, but some people say, well, that's just the way that I am. Or that's just how I've always been. That's what I've always gotten. That's just my luck. That's how everybody in my family is. I don't know if you've ever heard those phrases uttered before, but if you have or you've uttered them yourself, you know that when you utter those phrases, you are bouncing up against your upper limiting beliefs. What are upper limiting beliefs? That is the ability for us to visualize anything more than we currently have at that level. I'm about to share with you why that is a total falsity and how we can begin to rewire the brain. But the first thing we do have to understand is that all of us have upper limiting beliefs. So limiting beliefs, as an example, would be um, you're able to lose you know, 20 pounds, but you can never lose the 50 pounds that you want. Or you start to get healthy, but no matter what you do, you eventually relapse and you don't have any energy and you're low mood all the time. Or you always seem to think that you've picked the right partner or uh, person in life, but then eventually it always kind of crumbles away, right? It's always, always, always something outside of your own power. You feel like you have gotten the right step in the new career, but the job didn't turn out what you thought it would be, or you've started your own business, but you can't seem to achieve anything greater than X. Again, I'm just giving you different examples, and I'm doing that for a very specific reason, because I'm willing to bet right now there is one part of your life, relationships or family or charity or career or finances, or health, or body transformations, or spirituality, in one part of your area, skyrocketing, right? You're, you're doing amazing. You're feeling good about that area. And then there's typically an area where you're not doing as good. And it's the area that we're not doing as well that we blame on, well, that's just the way that I am. Well, I'm just, I'm wired that way. That's just who I am. That's who we are as a family. That's all we've ever been able to achieve and so on and so forth. Now, the problem with that is that while there are some innate talents, like superhuman things, like athletic ability or whatever it might be, for the most part, we are strictly limited by what our upper limiting belief is. And I believe that if you look deep down, you know that to be true because you've achieved things in your life that you didn't actually think you were going to be able to achieve. And if you think back 10 years ago or 20 years ago, depending on how old you are, you probably didn't believe that you'd be where you are necessarily today. So you've already surpassed many of your upper limiting beliefs and you've just created new ones based on the new level where you're at. Well, I'm here to share with you how to completely undo that and to stop saying, well, that's just the way that I am. Because the way that you are is specific based on your personality, right? Just who you are as a person. But your personality is formed in a very specific way and over time. So we can create a new personality if we choose to. Like, that's the truth. You may not believe it yet. Let's break it down. Okay, let's actually look at what's called neuroscience. So it's the neurons in the brain, and I would even say your nervous system, because that's the brain of your body, right? So the, 
the, the brain or the mind is in the head. We'll say the, the mind could be outside of the head, but it's our thoughts, right? But our brain, our organs in our head, and just like our nervous system is inside of our body. Well, the brain is connected to the body, and the body is those the nervous system, the neurons in the body, and there's the neurons in the brain. So the neurons in the brain are what send signals to the body, and the body sends signals back to the brain. All right, that's as much neuroscience as we're going to get into for today. But essentially, you are based on what you do on a daily basis. I'm going to make this like really cut and dry because we need to make sure that we understand how change is possible. Okay, so you may wake up every single day, right? And what do you do? Okay, well, you wake up and you, what do you do first? Like, I want you to go through this. Okay, what do you do? It's probably the same exact thing every day. You might go to the bathroom, use the bathroom. What do you do after that? Maybe you grab a glass of water, maybe a glass of lemon water. Maybe you're, whatever your routine is, you're getting ready for the day, you're helping your kids get ready. Uh, then you're getting changed yourself. Then you're driving the kids to school, or you're driving yourself to work. Like you're going through the same routine, you're taking the same path to work, you're doing the same tasks typically each day. You're coming home, you are having dinner with your spouse or your partner or your family or friends. You're going to bed and you're basically repeating those same patterns every day, right? That's, that's, basically what you're doing. So those are the behaviors you take every day. Now, as you take those behaviors, you think certain thoughts, right? Because the thoughts that you're having are reinforced by the things that you're also doing and vice versa. So basically, it's a feedback loop. I teach this in IHP Mastery. So integrative health practitioner, after you pass level one, you have the option to take in mastery. But what we do is it's, it's mastery over health coaching, but also over self. So you have to understand is that change is impossible until you realize that you're getting the life that you've got based on what you do on a daily basis. So your behaviors are dictating your current uh, source of your life and what you get out of it, right? So here's what we need to think about. All right, well, what is and how are we forming these behaviors? All right, well, we form these behaviors based on what is automatic for the body. Because we can't think about every little thing that we do every day. So we create habits. And again, in mastery, we teach something called breaking the habit loop or what is a habit loop, right? So what you're looking at is you do the same habitual things every day to decrease bandwidth in your brain. Your body now knows how to do it essentially without even your mind helping. Okay. So that's where the nervous system takes over. So when you walk in the bathroom, you're not thinking about, oh, let me brush this, my teeth. Me... No, you brush your teeth. You use the bathroom. You take a shower. Like it's, it's for the most part mindless. But then as you settle into a routine, the whole day for the most part becomes just kind of mindless almost, right? So we have to be really careful what habits we've developed over time because the habits are dictating our behaviors. And the behaviors, well, that's our life. That's our personality, right? How we behave is who we are. So we need to look at our habits. We need to actually become more self-aware of what we're doing on a daily basis. They don't all need to change, but the big drivers need to change. We'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, so habits are predetermined by the actions we are taking on a daily basis. And the actions we are taking on a daily basis, some need to be done. General hygiene, right? All those things do. But the rest of it is based on the feelings we had at some point that caused us to take an action in the first place. Again, even showering or shaving or combing our hair, it's based on a feeling, right? So it's based on like, well, I want to be presentable to the world, right? I mean, it's always based on something. So we have these feelings. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is that you need to understand that your feeling at some point created this habit, which then created a behavior, you may no longer be feeling those feelings about your job, relationship, whatever it might be. You might need to create new feelings where you say, well, how are feelings created? Feelings are first coming from thoughts. We don't always think that because the thoughts can be subconscious, right? And so we have to be careful about, again, what we believe we know and what we don't actually know, which is conjured up from our subconscious mind as well, which is creating these feelings essentially from our body, which has its own brain called the nervous system, right? Talked about that a lot in the, the functional medicine parts of this podcast about the peripheral nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, the central nervous system, right? Fight or flight, parasympathetic, rest and relax, all those good things. Well, here's the thing. Many years ago, especially when you're a child, you 
created these thoughts based on what you saw at that time as your reality. As a child, we see things differently as an adult, especially before the age of eight, definitely no longer than the age of 10. We're absorbing everything we see, and it's being imprinted in our machine, our supercomputer, in our nervous system, the, the brain of our body, in order to be able to know how to respond in the world around us. Before the age of eight, we are not always learning, typically not, by what we are told, we're learning about what we see. So if we are worried about punishment or um, any type of angst or worry or stress in our environment, we learn very quickly how to avoid that, right? And that is truly where our initial conditioning comes from. And then after that, it's being reinforced through our teenage years and really to our early 20s. That's it. Then it's solidified. Then it's our job to realize that, well, how we see things as a child is not necessarily how they are as an adult. We're trying to make sense of our world. We're trying to protect ourselves. We do things. We have feelings. We form habits. We create behaviors to keep us safe, to keep us loved, to keep us part of a tribe. Well, as an adult, we have to reevaluate all the time. Does this serve me? It served me as a child. Does it serve me now? Is this my reality? It was as a child. Is this my reality now? Right? Really important to ask these questions. They're not easy, but life isn't necessarily easy. I've never said that, but it can be beautiful. It can be amazing. It can be great. And I want you to get there if you're not already there now. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to think about this. What are our thoughts when it comes to our upper limiting beliefs? right? So everybody has an upper limiting belief as to how much money they can earn. That's an easy one, right? Most people do. They also have an upper limiting belief as to how energetic and happy they can feel. Because typically it's just based upon what you believe you can get now at this age and what you've had in the past. So if you didn't have it in the past, you can't even imagine what it would be like to have more than that, right? That's the difficult part. And then that, this goes for relationships. You can only really imagine the best relationship that you've ever really seen, either growing up or that you've had in your life. And then oftentimes we start to settle. Well, this is just the way that it is when X, Y, and Z, right? You insert some type of upper limiting belief. I don't want to use the word excuse because it's true. Like you have a belief system, everybody does, and there's an upper limiting belief. So even for the person who um, has the greatest amount of health or athletic ability or finances or relationship, whatever it is, they even have an upper limiting belief. Theirs is just super high, right? And so what I want you to start to think is that you are the one setting your upper limiting belief. So that's where you have to start. And the way that you start this process is to first evaluate what area of your life do you want to improve first? I'm telling you right now, it's too difficult to improve four areas at the same time. Choose one, two at the very most, especially if they overlap, right? So here's the thing, like body transformation and health, they overlap, right? They, I mean, they really do. Energy and body transformation or energy and health, they overlap. Like, so you, you can choose those, but it's really difficult to improve your, let's say, everything that you would need to learn for your health and then everything you would need to learn for your career. I mean, like just choose one for right now. That, that's what I would do. That's my recommendation because I've seen it work the most. So settle in over the course of 90 days on one goal and then add the next one, the next 90 days as you start to create new, what? Habits that create what? New, just personality, new behaviors. This is what you do now, right? And, and I'm going to link up a few podcasts today. This is episode 2390 of previous podcasts on the missing six hours per day, and essentially how to just use two 30-minute blocks a day. That's it. Like That's all you need in order to start to recreate your life. So first, you're choosing the area. Next, you're actually planning out. So another podcast to listen to is throw away your to-do list and do this instead. It's about planning instead of to-do lists. Those never work. And then what I want you to do is start to assess what comes up as you're thinking about that area. Okay. So say you want to improve your overall health. What's your upper limiting belief? Like, Ask yourself, honestly. Just say, hey, do you think I can get totally healthy and well? They're like, no, no, you, you can't. Everybody in your family has always had Hashimoto's or always had weight or always had whatever issue it might be, right? So just think about what conjures up in your mind. Let yourself allow yourself not to be judged and just think, okay? So what starts to come up? All right, well, that's your upper limiting belief. Don't judge it. It's there. It is what it is. Here's what we need to do. That upper limiting belief is there for some reason to keep your ego, your body, your mind, something safe. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. Okay, it's there. 
But now we can start to say, I'm not going to necessarily overcome this upper limiting belief all at once. What do I need to do, though, in order to get some small wins along the way to start to push that upper limiting belief a little higher, a little higher, and then a little higher? So now you say, well, I, over, I can't go over my Hashimoto's. Well, what is Hashimoto's? Like, what do you feel from it, right? Forget about the name. Well, what do you feel from it? Low energy, right? Dry skin, hair loss, low mood, brain fog, maybe some constipation, maybe some higher levels of cholesterol. Like, what is it that you have based on this thyroid-based issue? All right, well, let's not worry about Hashimoto's. Let's worry about, all right, how do we improve the dry skin, low energy, low mood? Like, how do we improve all that? Because we can do that. Let's not worry about the word Hashimoto's because it's, it's sometimes less intimidating to just worry about, okay, these specific symptoms and imbalances. All right, so what are we going to do? All right, we're going to formulate a plan. I'm not going to go through that plan today. I've, I've talked about that plan for low thyroid. And, and just again, low thyroid is just an example, but you can insert any dis-ease of the body into that. And you can, in, you can include a career. You can include finances. Break it down, smaller parts, something that's easy to digest, something that isn't as overwhelming or intimidating. Because remember, that upper limit there is, to, is there to protect you, subconscious-wise, from something in the past, some other belief you've created. We need to create new thoughts. The new thought is that instead of, I can't, I won't, I'm not good enough, no one in my family has ever been able to do this, I will, I am. These are things that we need to say. So again, you're not totally overcoming the upper limiting belief. You're saying, I am someone that is able to, or I am going to do this action, right? So what do you need to overcome Hashimoto's? You need to fix your digestion, right? So I am going to fix my digestion. That's what you're going to do. How are you going to do that? Oh, you might run the gut health bundle. You right, might run the candida metabolic vitamins test. You might run something to figure out what's going on. All right. Say you do that. You then complete, let's say the CBO protocol. All right. I'm going to complete the CBO protocol. We're not talking about Hashimoto's. We're talking about underlying root cause imbalances. You can complete the CBO protocol. It's 12 weeks. You can do that, right? Okay. So you are now what? You are a person doing, what do we talk about? Taking different actions. You are taking different actions. When you take different actions, you start to feel a little bit better, right? Just, just the start of taking a new action is like, whoa, I'm in growth mode here. Might be a little uncomfortable. Listen to last week's Motivation Mindset Monday. If you're feeling uncomfortable, overwhelmed, worried, listen to last week's. But you are giving yourself a little, small little pat on the back. Hey, I'm doing something new. I've recommitted, right? So now you're taking new actions. You start to get a win. Oh, I feel less bloated. Feel a little bit better, a little bit more energy. What does that mean? Reinforcing better feelings. Better feelings is going to lead to better thoughts. I should do more of this, which creates what? More habitual actions. Keep doing the healthy things. Maybe it's a smoothie for breakfast. Maybe it's walking 7,000, 10,000 steps per day. Maybe it's uh, eating uh, easier to digest meals, right? Like all these things. What does it create? New behaviors. Because the behaviors are what you're actually doing from the thoughts to the feelings, right? To the actions, to the habits, to the behaviors. Behaviors what? Your personality. So what are you doing without you thinking about it? You're changing your personality. You're changing from upper limiting beliefs and someone that can't to someone that is at least willing to try to eventually someone who can. And when you do it in one area, you can transfer that win to another area and do this over and over and over. And when you do this over the course of weeks, it doesn't look like much. Over the course of months, starts to get pretty great. Over the course of years, you will not recognize how far you've come until you begin to look back and you'll say, wow, I never thought I would be where I am today. And that is how you change. Hopefully today's podcast, hopefully today's video was helpful. If it was, please, as always, do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Have an amazing day. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, 
protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.